Hi, my name is James Hodcroft, and I am the proud liver of a life less ordinary. You see, I was born on the 7th of August 1918. I was quite literally taken home to a film set. Because of this, some of the first people I was ever surrounded by were the likes of Ricky Schroeder, Sir Alec Guinness, and Patrick Stewart. I worked at Buckingham Palace. I was a porter. Uh, I found myself being the front man of a rock band. One of the first people to ever actually review us was rock and roll legend Vince Eager. We went on to record CDs and tour, worked with our heroes. I even found myself hanging out in hotels with the likes of Dave Mustang. I was asked to produce the score to an independent Brit thriller. You'll have seen me in things like Fake Britain, when one of my businesses was attacked with fake Facebook reviews. I actually hunted down the guy that did it, and he tried to blackmail me. So I exposed him, which didn't do his business much good. You'll have seen me in Doctor in the House, and maybe you'll have seen some of the films that I've been in. At least one or two of them. One of them, I think, is actually streaming now on Channel 5. None of these are masterpieces, but I continue to do what I love doing, and I'm very lucky. Just before lockdown, I started my own production company, and one of the first things that I was going to do on the back of Doctor in the House was actually produce a medical documentary that was designed to help the NHS. The production was somewhat derailed. Getting into lockdown, I became so tired of celebrities and, and influencers who spread COVID and vaccine propaganda. And I started actually compiling evidence of which ones did it and started researching where they got their propaganda from because it all seemed to match up, but it didn't seem to make any sense according to science or medicine. And I soon found that they didn't like people who were educated. Now, since I started my personal Twitter account in 2009, which has garnered attention and the following of everybody from the likes of Ruby Wax and the Goss Brothers to Justin Bieber, and Tony Todd, one of my personal heroes. I know how people interact with me. Between 2009 and 2021, I'd acquired a PhD. So quite legitimately, to see how people responded to me on Twitter, I changed my title to Dr. James Hodcroft PhD. The difference was phenomenal. I was very quickly accused of being a part of the problem. Someone that would wake up to what I had done. I was told that I was Illuminati, and I was accused of being a murderer because of three letters after my name. That's all. And amazingly, people just assume that because I have a PhD, I'm a scientist. There's a lot of assumption in the anti-vax world, as I found. And they don't like people who make money who happen to disagree with them. Because if you make money and you happen to disagree with them, you're clearly paid to disagree with them. You are paid to lie. You are paid to come to the conclusions that you do. So when I set out to make a documentary about celebrity and influencer propaganda pushes on social media, I chose to do so with no budget. I didn't want any money coming into the production whatsoever. I couldn't have any crew because if a member of the crew was found to be pro-vax, it would derail. I couldn't rent equipment because if I rented equipment from a company that happened to have an employee who had pro-vax opinions that were publicized, it would derail the documentary. I've had to work on this alone using my own equipment, my own time, and my own money. And because of that, I've been quite open about what I'm doing. I've met some incredible people on Twitter. People who really want to help. People who have brought information to me in the hopes that it may plug some gaps in the research that I'm doing. I wanted to know where this disinformation was coming from, and people were really trying to help. There were certain names that kept being raised that weren't celebrities, they weren't influencers, and so I didn't want to be distracted by them. Unfortunately, there was one that I couldn't avoid. So I'm going to ask what you would do. I want to know what you would do if someone accused you of being a fantasist in front of thousands of people. I want to know what you would do if someone accused you of being a liar in front of thousands of people. I want to know what you would do if that person blocked you so that their followers couldn't see 
the truth that you were trying to tweet about their behavior. And instead, they would periodically visit your Twitter timeline to screenshot things and quote them to their followers out of context until their followers started attacking you as well because you've been painted as a bully and a troll and a liar. What would you do if that person tore apart every professional achievement that you have and said that it never happened? In my case, they said that the closest I had been to a music career was playing the guitar in my bedroom. Did call me a fantasist, called me a liar, has completely and utterly dismissed any qualification that I have, and then obsessively visited my timeline in the hopes of humiliating me. My last question, what would you do if this person was a psychologist within the NHS? You see, Dr. W is a bully. He does spread propaganda. He does block people and then use what he can see of theirs out of context because he knows that people can't see when he is actually replying to their tweets. He just looks very brave to his followers. He writes the narrative. Dr. W will delve into your private life. He will find information that he thinks he can humiliate and threaten you with, and he will publish it. Dr. W will find out who your employers are, and he'll write to them and make a complaint. He won't offer any evidence, but he's a doctor in the NHS. He will write to your university or college and complain about your conduct online with no evidence. But because he's a doctor within the NHS, his letter holds some weight. It's all with a view to derailing your career, both academic and professional, and making you feel like you don't have the power to challenge him. But here's the problem. I've asked you what you would do. Now I'm going to tell you what I've done. Very early on in our interaction, I told Dr. W that I was making a documentary and because of that, I was recording every single interaction we had from both sides. He claimed that tweets that he had sent me didn't exist. He claimed he had never looked into my life and that he had never said anything about my children. He claimed that I was the bully. He claims that I am obsessed with him. Interesting considering I'm the one that's blocked and he's the one that continues to visit my timeline. He claims that I'm harassing him. He claims that he's contacted the police about me. The funny thing is, he claims that about a lot of people. In fact, if you go to Dr. W's timeline, and you actually search the word bully, the amount of people that he accuses of being a bully is endless, including ex-managers, including people he works with. His anti-vax, anti-LGBTQI+, anti-trans, anti-inclusion, anti-abortion, anti-female misogynistic stance is broadcast for the world to see. How are his patients going to feel if they go to him for help after they've seen a timeline full of all of these really strong opinions about things that they may actually need help with. But one of the things that bothers me the most is that he's a psychologist who is anti-psychiatry. He believes that psychiatrists are frauds and they're bullies and they're not interested in people and they're just there to drug you. And that actually a lot of what they do is lies. At first, I thought this was a strange admission because you see, I've been under the care of a psychiatrist because I have ADHD and I know that actually before you are handed over to a psychiatrist, you have to go through an incredibly stringent psychological assessment process. So was he saying that he had had patients that had gone to psychiatrists because he doesn't do his job very well? Or more likely, is he saying that he's got patients who could potentially really benefit from psychiatric intervention and he won't let them because of his completely inflexible views on psychiatry. Now, I don't know about you, but if I were the HCPC or Mersey Care, I would be going back through Dr. W's files and all records of his patient interactions and interviewing those patients to find out actually if perhaps they aren't being taken down 
the best route for their care. But that's just me. The best part is that although Dr. W has a tendency of saying that tweets have been doctored, they've been changed in Photoshop, they never existed or they've been quoted out of context, I wonder what he'll say when it transpires that I have a spreadsheet that documents every single tweet that Dr. W has made since 2020. Every word of every tweet and every single external ID of every tweet. So no matter how much he claims that he was the victim, no matter how much he claims that he didn't say something or what he did say was taken out of context, all an investigator has to do is look at the date and the time of the screenshot, match it up with the external ID and see for themselves. So Dr. W, let me tell you something. I'm not a fantasist, but I am an attention seeker. It's kind of my job. If I wasn't an attention seeker, probably wouldn't be into entertainment. Dr. W, I need to tell you that I can disprove every single lie you've told about me. And you've got a problem. And that is because of the nature of what you've said about me and various other Twitter users. You are guilty of libel. As soon as your followers started accusing me of the things that you have accused me of, it became quite clear that you have defamed me. You have defamed other Twitter users. You have made claims that one of them is being investigated by the GMC, and that's not true. You've made claims that some of them are being investigated by the police. Can't find any evidence of that. You have associated innocent people's names with anonymous accounts and you have been incorrect. You have been absolutely steadfast in your claim to your followers and in front of thousands of people, that these anonymous accounts are being run by these innocent people. Again, because you have delved into people's personal lives, found their names, shared them on Twitter, you've shared their identities, and you've shared information about their educational establishments and their employers with false allegations, you are guilty of libel and Every single account can be proven. So now I'm going to tell you what to do. You're going to stop tweeting me. You are going to stop tweeting everybody that you tweet with your vile lies. You are going to stop calling me Jim, Jimmy, mate, pal. You're going to stop being so f***ing rude. Oh, but there is something that I need to thank you for. You see, because of your absolute inability to be professional, to be a decent human being, to be anyone but you, you inadvertently led me to the answer I'd been looking for all along. My quest to find where all of this weird disinformation was coming from had led me as far afield as the dark web, but I still couldn't quite pin it down, particularly in the UK, but because you, were obsessive and you were lying and you were attracting my attention and piquing my interest and doing every single thing that I warned you not to do. You directed me to a group of people who openly discussed how they were going to twist the truth and come up with absolute lies because they knew what they were doing was wrong, but they wanted to scare people away from accessing vaccines, using masks, and accessing help for their loved ones and their children, and you were part of that. And I have the email, I have the messages, I have the faces and the names and the professions, people within the NHS, people within academia, people within the professional scientific community who knew exactly what they were doing, and every one of them has you to thank for what comes next. Well, soon there will be an entire documentary, not only about this, but also about those celebrities that I promised you. Get involved. And in the meantime, whatever you do, don't tweet the hashtag, who is Dr. W? And don't copy in Merseycare or the HCPC.